All right, so thank you all for coming. Um, we Just to give you an overview of how this session is gonna go, we are gonna start with a how to REU um, presentation by the SPS president. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about the internship and then we have our wonderful previous interns here to answer some questions and give you a lot of details on the um, process of applying as well as the internship it itself and the post-internship. So um, if you have questions, you are welcome to ask in the um, Q&A uh, box, um, but we are going to get started. So I will hand it over to our SPS president. Thank you, Ella. So um, my name is Kils Kileski. I I'm SPS president currently, and I'm actually a faculty professor at Cleveland State, and also a PI on our new grant uh, at Cleveland State. So um, I have a uh, personal interest in trying to invite you guys into our RU program, but I also feel very strongly about undergraduate research in general. And I think the RU program, uh, and the self sponsored RU program, uh, is a very important program to help you uh, explore those research opportunities across uh, the country. So let me start sharing my uh, presentation here. All right. So uh, this presentation was put together with uh, a former director of SPS, ever present Brad Conrad. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, all right. So uh, SPS, while we, I am SPS president, just a very quick reminder, SPS Society of Physics Students, and it's it exists to support undergraduates in physics and astronomy and welcomes everyone with interest, uh, interest in physics. And, SPS has been around since uh, 1968, and Sigma Pi Sigma is our honor society. So we'll be talking about research experience for undergraduates, and this is an um, NSF-sponsored program. In fact, this is the longest-running program that NSF has, which is really an amazing statistics if you think about this. It was established in 1958 and uh, has been running almost continuously since then. There was a one small hiatus uh, after 82, for five years, it was frozen. And after, in 87, it was reintroduced with the current name, Research Experience Fund Degraded. Still, it's the longest running uh, grant program uh, of uh, National Science Foundation, which should tell you a lot. Um, so the, it's uh, based on the science across the United States and not only, we'll talk a little bit about that as well. It covers many fields. Uh, obviously, we uh, will be talking mostly about physics and astronomy, but um, I on purpose list all those different sites here uh, uh, because many physics majors find it very useful to go through our research experience uh, uh, in different uh, majors and different disciplines, I should say. So uh, we have material research site and uh, one example is actually a review that we have at Cleveland State. I am professor of physics. Our U is based in the physics department, but formally we are under the division of material sites. So uh, so it's a review run by the physics department, but it is listed uh, in, in, in uh, NSF website as material research review. And there are similar uh, cases with many other reviews, really great reviews that I'll talk a little bit of, uh, as well. Uh, some are used to take into account would be atmospheric and geospace sciences, ocean sciences, or sciences. Obviously, there is lots of engineering use where uh, all the physics and astronomy just will be welcome in. Um, computer information science engineering, uh, there's a separate subclass, there are lots of them as well. Mathematical sciences, sometimes you might want to consider too, as well as chemistry and biological sciences. Uh, so typically, you would take about 10 uh, students uh, per summer. Uh, and this would be authentic research experience guided by faculty, sometimes with the help of uh, um, some graduate students uh, in the lab. It also includes professional development and networking, community building experience where you get uh, friends for the rest of your lives, um, as many students uh, talk about. Um, so it is designed um, for students oftentimes with no research experience. And again, uh, our U at Cleveland State, we particularly uh, trying to aim uh, our focus on students who had no real research experience in their uh, uh, in their institution. So this is a, a few basic a uh, few basic uh, points about the review. Uh, most of reviews take students outside from uh, their uh, um, institution. Our uh, you pay good salary, uh, about six hundred to six hundred fifty dollars per week. Typical review runs for ten weeks. 
a housing often is provided. It's not always the case, but in majority of cases that I am familiar with, it is provided. Uh, most of these include travel funds to site and from the site, as well as um, some travel money to go to national conference to present your results afterwards and to network too. Uh, generally, it's over the summer for the a period of 10 weeks. Uh, as uh, I mentioned right here, there are 104 physics and astronomy use sites in 2024, which are active. Plus, there are lots of those other RU sites which would welcome physics majors, but formally listed not under physics and astronomy. And of course, uh, in addition to RU, we'll be talking about the SPS internships, and we have all this wonderful panel that I definitely should uh, let uh, talk about the uh, SPS internship as well as different uh, research experiences at national labs, universities, and uh, companies over the summer. But I'll try to focus on uh, REU uh, in general, so NSF-sponsored REU. So this uh, QR code uh, uh, sends you to the uh, NSF site. So if I uh, press on this, and I, I think I'll have to stop sharing and uh, share quickly the website that I have right here, uh, it brings you to this, uh, REU site for students. And uh, it's a very basic site. It's very easy to search. So uh, we went to for students portion of it. If you do a search for your site, you will see all those disciplines. And I, uh, in my slides, I pointed out the ones which particularly would be looking for physics majors. So if you were talking about physics, all right, so let's, let's look at physics. And they sorted out here by the name of the site, uh, site location. And you have a content information and some additional information such would be what would be research topics. And there's also abstract for every single award. So you can read a little bit about every single award. So you can try to uh, 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 list this by the states. So here we start with Alabama and we go Arizona and so on and so forth. You can also go by institutions uh, and well, Alabama AM University would be also the first one. Okay, and again, you can explore this uh, at your leisure. There are 104 sites. So um, let me go back to my uh, presentation here. And um, so here it is. So this QR code will bring you to the site. Okay, the uh, what I wanted to talk about quickly next are uh, some particular RU programs, just to give you a little bit of a sense. Okay, um, so these particular ones on this uh, slide uh, are RU programs uh, in physics and astronomy. Uh, and those are the programs that I know one way or another. Uh, I promise you they didn't pay me any money to advertise the RU program. I just feel very strongly about those RU programs because I know some. So for example, College of Worcester, well, this is actually one of the uh, longest continuous running, maybe the longest continuous running uh, uh, RU program in the country. They had RU program since 94. Worcester is a tiny town uh, in uh, not far away from Cleveland, maybe one, one and a half hour away. So they, they actually are competitors. Uh, and uh, they have been running RU for all these years, continuously, every single year through pandemic as well. Now, I'm from Cleveland, and uh, students that I'm dealing with usually from Mr. Sah North Dakota High as well. And so very often when you look about, about think about our use, you can think, well, do you want to stay local or do you want to go somewhere far away? So in the next uh, list here is Brigham Young University. And why do I bring it? Well, it's a great university, plus one of my students were there for uh, some RU. And it was really a mind-blowing experience from the stories that she told us because, yeah, she did a great uh, research uh, project in uh, astrophysics, but additionally, she built this cohort of friends and what they did, uh, so every single RU would have those uh, social activities, like every week they will do something together as a cohort. So every week they went to a national park. So like Arches and Cascades National Park and Zion National Park. Have you guys been to all of this? I have not. Well, this is a wonderful way to spend your summer where you do research, build your resume, and also visit national parks of Utah. That's uh, not a bad idea, don't you think? So that's, that's, that's another one that I want to sort of highlight here. The third one is really unique. And uh, this is something that uh, you reading right. It's University of Michigan and Paris. It's called Optics in the City of Light. Okay, and this RU program is really amazing because you spend a week at the University of Michigan and then you travel for the rest of your 10 weeks of time to Paris and do research there at several universities, several research institutions there. It's a very highly competitive program, 
but you can get in there. And again, I know one student from our EU who went the following year after our EU to this program and had an amazing time with a, a Nobel laureate in optics, uh, researching some nonlinear optics uh, problems. So uh, one important thing that I like to find out in every single site here, I also list the deadlines and you can see the typical of deadlines, February, Okay, but this particular one, uh, the good programs, the really highly competitive ones have an early deadline. So Office University of Light has a, a deadline of uh, uh, January 12th, and SPS Internship has a deadline of January what, 15, 17. So you can see that the really highly competitive programs, they have uh, early deadlines. And it's something for you to start thinking about because, well, uh, these, those deadlines are just a month away. Right, so you should start uh, looking into this, and you should start applying. But even with all those other use, uh, February wealth will come very soon, so you might want to start exploring this. Uh, there are a few, uh, a few uh, RU programs here, which mentioned as well in astronomy, uh, Keck North East Astronomy Consortium, which is a wonderful place which brings together several liberal arts colleges, and you can do RU programs at uh, various colleges there. At the University uh, of uh, New Mexico. Uh, sort of far away from Cleveland, you can see there's a National Radio Astronomy Observatory. This is another extremely competitive RU program. Um, and again, if you're interested in astronomy, this is something for you to consider. Uh, Miami University, that's another Florida neighbor. Uh, I'm sorry, not Florida. Uh, it's Ohio, Ohio, Miami. Uh, and it's a neighbor for, for me, relatively speaking. And uh, RIT is something that I feel strongly about this. They have a wonderful uh, color institute there, and this RU actually has to do with it. Now, the next one is something, the next slide that I want to talk about a little bit in, uh, in some detail, because the top one here, uh, well, first of all, all of them here on the slide uh, are not physics are used. They're not formally listed as physics are used. Many of them are based out of physics departments, but not all of them. But all of them looking forward to uh, welcome uh, physics majors and astronomy majors. So the top one is atmospheric and, ge and geospace sciences. And this is National Weather Center in Oklahoma. And it's a really amazing place if you're interested about weather uh, science and physicists are definitely welcome there. This is a great place. This is the place to go for weather scientists. Ocean sciences, uh, well, this one is from California State University and uh, one of my students went there recently and it really changed his whole trajectory. He was doing research in my optics lab. He was studying some soft matter, basically uh, condensed matter physics. And then he went to this ocean sciences REU and realized that while well, actually doing physics while being out there on the ship and on, on the coast of Pacific Ocean, that's something for him. That's something that he would like to do for the rest of his life and not being stuck in a dark lab with no light, right? If, you, if you're doing optics experiments. So again, REU open for you different possibilities and something that you might want to consider. Another one is a neighbor here, a University of Akron. It's also one of the longest running, I believe maybe the longest running uh, program in material science. It is being run by Polymer Science and Polymer Engineering program uh, about an hour from Cleveland in Akron. Cleveland State, we'll talk about this in a second. Kent State, another neighbor. Uh, this would be from Liquid Crystal Institute. If you're thinking about the birthplace of liquid crystals, oh, well, it's North City High as well, Kent State University. You can go there, they can actually do some physics research at Liquid Crystal Institute through, uh, through the summer. There's an engineering review. Uh, this one is uh, a Pritzker School of Molecular Engineering. Now, again, you would think, well, what, what does it have to do with physics majors? Well, I got this uh, advertisement for this review from a former student uh, uh, that uh, went through our U program, and he is a, a graduate student in physics in the University of Chicago. And he's saying they are looking for physics majors, specifically for physics majors, because of ability of physics majors to solve problems, because of ability of physics majors to look at things from a different perspective, not from perspective of biology, but from perspective of well understanding how actually things work. And so they specifically were given a charge, graduate students at the University of Chicago, given a charge to send out this uh, flyers to uh, you know, faculty and uh, friends that they know in the physics, physics community. So uh, that's another one. And last one, computer information science engineer, this is from University of Maryland. Uh, and they have a wonderful uh, program on data science as well as on, at AI. So it's something that might be very, uh, uh, very much of interest to some of you. So the uh, Cleveland State University soft matter RU, well, I have to plug in a little bit our RU. There is a QR code for that. You can go and apply directly if you uh, 
scan this uh, are you called you uh, i'm sorry qr code you can actually go directly to application form uh what we are well it is based on physics uh at the physics department uh it uh, has uh five physics faculty and uh five uh faculty from biomedical chemical biomedical engineering of Cleveland state we uh focus on soft matter different part of, uh, type of nanoparticles uh dna uh, we'll look at the uh, biophys biophysics prob problems. We also collaborate with Case West. We have two faculty who will be uh, helping us uh, in writing this RU from Case Western Reserve University as well. So uh, this is a program if you're interested in this soft matter, sort of a soft condensed matter. Okay. Uh, now, typically, what would be application process? So in application process, they will ask you to uh, submit some general information about you. And uh, if you go to this QR code for Columbus State, you'll see that. Uh, what is your preparation? So what are our courses and you know, what type of skills you have? Any lab skills or coding skills would always be pretty, uh, appreciated. And any type of uh, writing sample. So usually you also ask to write an essay where you have to um, talk about a, spe you know, a specific uh, prompt, uh, a resume, of course, one to two, three letters of recommendation. Those most likely will come from faculty, from professors that teach you classes, uh, or possibly from uh, someone who you did some research project with. Okay, and the statement of preferred uh, RU project. This is often, I would say, really very often uh, asked, right? So the chosen site, you really need to spend a little bit of time to figure out what type of projects are there. You go to the our RU site, you'll see right away, we have those 13 projects you can pick most searching project and you can say this is my first priority second priority third priority and then when we uh, pick uh the students we basically try to make students and faculty interest of students and inter and uh faculty who are taking those students so uh applications are viewed holistically what it means is that uh, very often those prompts uh ask you to tell uh the faculty so basically us uh, something about you uh, outside of your grades, outside of your uh, direct uh, experience or uh, skills dealing with particular software package or uh, programming skills and so on. Those are important, no question about it. But also tell us about, well, who you actually are. So, for example, in our review, we really, uh, all of our experiments are either real experimental uh, physics or uh, modeling. And oftentimes in these experiments, as you guys know, uh, well, things don't necessarily work. So uh, perseverance, persistence of working and not giving up if things don't really work exactly like you want to is a very important quality for us. So what we ask students is uh, our prompt is something like, well, explain to us a situation it doesn't have to be in your academic life. It can be in any part of your life where you faced a difficulty and what did you do to overcome this difficulty? For us, it feels very important because if uh, you know we get a student who tries to do this experiment and sees that it doesn't work and completely gives up, well, there is no real benefit to anyone from that. Okay, so that's something that we feel important. It's actually a very common um, idea among the different RU programs. Uh, so uh, when you do the application, again, uh, many of those things repeat. Uh, uh, repeats of what I had before. Uh, so something that you need to uh, have in mind are those important uh, terms uh, mentioned here. So you need to really describe how mature you are, what type of leadership uh, skills you have. Do you actually possess any grit, uh, dependability, are you dependable? Do you have any teaching experience? What are your communication uh, skills? A and so on. Now, uh, SPS have a bunch of resources available that you guys can access. Uh, and so if you go to this um, QR code, you can get to the... Uh, uh, some of those resources, which will help you to uh, write a nice letter and uh, write a, a good resume. This is a serious process. Many of those RU programs are extremely competitive, and uh, you really need to figure out a way how you can show off your personal uh, best. Um, so uh, the typical types of uh, application essays, uh, you know, what you have to be uh, talking about on those essays, just very briefly. Uh, you really uh, need to make sure that your essay stands out. It's not okay to just say, yeah, I went to kindergarten, then to middle school, then to high school. Oh, yeah, I love physics from my, uh, the day I, I, I was born. Uh, and here I am, I would like to do the RU. You really need to show how different you are. 
what is so special about you? Do you have this, uh, you know, uh, experience where you had to overcome particular difficulty and you did this in some amazing way? Great. Uh, do you have uh, some maybe other type of research experience, which might be very good for uh, some of those programs? Uh, on the other hand, you, if you don't have any experience, but you have this interest in trying to do, uh, trying to uh, perform some research, uh, this also might be very important. Again, some programs, as I mentioned, for example, our program, we're not looking for uh, students with research experience. Our main uh, point is that we're trying to reach out to many of those Ohio, uh, Illinois, Indiana, uh, and uh, Pennsylvania colleges that don't have PhD programs and have students who, um, well, don't have opportunity to do real uh, first-hand uh, research, basic research with their faculty. And they're really looking for opportunities somewhere else. And that's what we're trying to sort of fill this niche. Many programs are like that. Not all of them are like that. Some programs might be looking particularly for some research experience. So this is something for you to explore when you start writing those essays. Uh, now, a very typical question. This is all the REU uh, PIs will be asking you one way or another. How likely is it that you're go going to go to grad school? Uh, okay, it's fine not to want to, not to uh, be sure if you wanted to go to grad school. It's perfectly fine. Uh, but I mean, are you interested in a STEM career, right? So that's something that maybe you should somehow indicate because yeah, we would like to have uh, you know applicants who are interested in STEM career. Right now, with grad school again, it's perfectly fine uh, not to uh, have specific plans at the moment to go to grad school. There is nothing wrong with it. In fact, you know, we usually like to say, "Oh, look, only twenty-five percent of our students uh, uh, had set plans to go to grad school," and now, well, we're up to uh, whatever seventy percent. I think the uh, this is close to our numbers uh, with our EU program. Now, you definitely should very, be very specific about the uh, each application. I know it takes time, but you need to try to sort of do your research and figure out which programs you really want to go to, and then uh, write this essay for the specific program, because the question why the specific program is a good fit for you and why you are, those two questions, right, a good fit for the specific program are extremely important for any program, okay? It's across the board, everywhere, right? Everyone agrees that this is something that uh, is very important in, in essays. Uh, you need to be expressive, specific. Your essay should be heartfelt. Uh, it's good to uh, name, drop, uh, name drop people, right? So many are used actually specifically asked like ours, which research projects you'd be interested in. So do a little bit of research, try to do that. Be specific, that's an important thing. Last uh, two comments. Uh, well, have at least three people to review your essay. Yeah, you can ask your friends, you can ask your family, you can ask your uh, professor to do that. And uh, the very the, the bolded comment here comes from Brad. Well, you really should show and not tell the story. Okay, that, that's, that, that's a very important point. I totally agree with that. Um, okay, letters recommendation. Well, you'll be asking your professors to write letters recommendation. Hopefully they know you good, you know you well. And it's not just knowing the grade, uh, your grade that you had, that you were the top student in the class. Believe me, if uh, I have a letter recommendation where uh, you know I, I, I'm told that, well, this particular student was the top student in the class, period, and nothing else in this letter, I don't take this letter seriously. It doesn't tell me anything. Great. This student is the top student. Okay. How is he going to work in the lab? I have no clue, no idea. So you really want to find someone who would be... Uh, willing to write a letter for you who can uh, sh uh, show in this letter your other qualities. Are you a hard worker? Uh, can you work consistently on things? Uh, again, did you have to you know, face some challenges and overcome them in the particular class? Okay, This sort of thing that, again, for me would be very important. Uh, things like leadership, volunteering, uh, definitely would be something uh, important to uh, be reflected in the recommendation letters. Uh, clubs, okay, employment on campus, you know, to show that, well, you are a well-rounded person, that you do many things, that you have find time to do uh, not just your studies, but also all, all those other things. Uh, so many programs require at least two, some require even four letters, right? And as I said, you know, class professors, research advisors, you have one, your club advisor would be good, maybe former high school teacher would be fine too, if you just in the first year of your uh, degree, 
uh, department chair. Department chairs would definitely, if they know you a little bit, they definitely would be interested and invested in writing a letter for you. Okay. Uh, last couple of things. Uh, there's a cool uh, site here. Uh, I guess uh, again, a SPL site career toolbox. If you go through this uh, QR code, uh, it, career toolbox can uh, help you to uh, learn how to write nice resume and uh, uh, cover letter and all of those things. Not just for you, but in general for any type of uh, career application. Uh, we have. Uh, those are the resources that you can uh, look through. So there's a SPS observer that has a bunch of uh, stuff uh, that, uh, again, articles that talk about how to write those uh, type of uh, uh, type of um, applications. Again, if you didn't catch it before, this is the most important uh, QR, QR link that uh, we have in this presentation. This is QR link to nsf.gov, to the RU site where you can search for those different RU programs. Uh, SPS job sites, uh, well, it's a good site. Uh, SPS jobs advertise our new programs for free. So this is a wonderful way for you to check out and find what type of our new programs are there uh, and do it, do it through the SPS job site. Uh, finally, we have uh, this slide which talks about not only NSF locations, NSFRU, but also there are those research uh, uh, research opportunities through uh, uh, DOE labs, so, uh, 17 of them this year. So it's something that you can look through as well. I'm not as familiar with them all this time around. There's a NISURF program too. Okay, uh, it's something that you also might want to explore. Uh, NASA runs this so internship uh, program across the uh, NASA research centers. There's one in Cleveland too, which is highly competitive, extremely cool, uh, but there is one site. There's only basically one location through which you have to go. Uh, so that's basically all that I wanted to say before we get to the uh, most important thing, right? SPS internship program. So I, I'll just leave the slide up there and I can, uh, you know, this business internship program is extremely prestigious program um, that I think uh, everyone else on this call can describe much better than I can. Okay, so I'll, I'll just uh, stop sharing here and let uh, you guys do the rest. Awesome. Thank you so much. That was such an informative presentation and definitely highly recommend to use those resources that were just presented. Um, we do have a question before we move on to the SPS internship program. And again, if you have any uh, specific questions about REUs, please put them in the chat so we can um, ask them. Um, the question is, what if we don't have any work experience for our resume and just activities? That's perfectly fine. It's, it's where I understand that if you don't have a work experience, there's but it, it's not a problem at all. So don't worry about that. But if you do have work experience, you don't want to hide it. That's basically my point. Okay. Give a second, any other questions? Um, is there anything, and I'll let the interns as well before we get into the SPS intern specific, if there's anything you all want to add about REUs or anything you want to add on to what was just said? Yes. Absolutely. So with these research opportunities like kirill said if you come from a school that does not have a lot of research opportunities at your college or it's just not public it's hard to get in then this is a very valuable tool to decide is research a thing i like doing you can also get paid to do it it's just a fun summer job if you don't like research in the end but not near you Awesome, thank you, Taylor. Anything else before we move on? Awesome, thank you so much, Kirill. And um, we'll talk a little bit more about the SPS internship that uh, Kirill highlighted. Um, so Michaela, did you wanna share a slide real quick? Yeah, one second. Uh. 
Okay, awesome. So I'll be very brief. Um, I'm Kayla Stevens. I am the assistant director of SPS. And this is one of the programs that I get to oversee. And this is by far one of the most rewarding things that I get to do. Um, so the internship is 10 weeks and it is paid and we do pay for your travel. Um, Michaela will get a little bit more information about that. But one thing that I do want to um, highlight is that this internship is so unique is because that it includes um, placement sites from many different fields and many different um, interests. So if you're interested in uh, science writing or policy or research or astronomy, um, it, there's something for almost everyone. And so even if someone is working um, in one field, you are learning from one another. Um, you're living together and uh, there are so many other opportunities across the summer as well. So we do heavily invest in um, professional development and uh, networking. So there's just a lot of opportunity. Um, and then also you're in DC and you're just having a great time. So that is one thing that I do want to um, highlight about how unique this internship program um, is. And I'll hand it over to Michaela. Thank you, Kayla. Um, so I'm Michaela Cleaver. I'm the SPS programs coordinator. I help Kayla with all the internship stuff. Um, and so here's just a quick overview of the internship. So like in REU, it's a 10 week paid summer internship and you're, we're paying for your housing in Washington, DC. Um, like Kayla said, there's a lot of different topics that you could be interested in. And we do ask for your ranks of the positions and we do try to match up people with their higher ranked um, positions. Um, we participate in outreach events. Uh, we did dinner with the XCOM. We went to a baseball game last year. So it's like a super fun thing to do. It's a lot of fun bonding. And then like I, like Kayla said, there's also a stipend and all the other benefits of that. Um, so for eligibility, you do have to be an SPS member to apply. Um, and it does take up to two weeks for that membership to process. So make sure that um, you're doing that before two weeks before the deadline. Um, we would like that you've demonstrated interest in one of the topic areas. We prefer two years of college experience, but we have had freshmen and sophomores participate in the past. So don't let that deter you from applying. Um, and some positions might require you a citizenship um, based on if we're working with the government or not, um, but there are positions for international students as well. Uh, you can get to the application portal by scanning that QR code um, and applications are open right now and due January 15th. And we typically are announce all the positions by the middle of March, but they are announced on a rolling basis as we do interviews. Okay, and I will stop sharing. Awesome. Thank you for that. And um, just to kind of, um, before we get into some questions about the citizenship, so we do have international students, but you have to provide your own paperwork that um, that you are eligible to work in the U.S. So if that is a question, just make sure that it is going to be on you to make sure you have the documents that you need. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and get into some questions. Well, actually, I want everyone to introduce themselves. So if you can just say um, who you are, um, if you are still a student or what you're doing now, if you're working, um, and what did you do um, as part of the internship? Like, what was your position? So we'll start on my screen or the order. So Taylor, if you can start. Hi, everybody. My name is Taylor Kalizi. I graduated from Washington and Lee University in May of 2023 with a Bachelor's of Science in Physics and double major in music performance. Currently, I'm substitute teaching while I'm a prospective colleges and making applications. And when I was part of the SPS internship in 2022, I worked at NIST, Gaithersburg, National Institute for Standards and Technology. And I was doing research with Dr. Chung to discover new ways that we can sense the electron resonance um, with the and because we were trying to build um, like a radiation detector. And that was what we were focusing on. Awesome. Thank you so Thank you. much. Thank you. Um, Justin? Hi, everyone. My name is Justin Andrea Vendania. You can call me Justin. Uh, I'm an international student from Stevens Institute of Technology. Uh, this is my senior year. I was an intern two years ago for the Society of Rheology. Um, it was pretty fun, honestly. Uh, we had a lot of uh, gastronomy stuff we worked on. Um, it was also a lot of outreach on uh, making like YouTube videos and like 
trying to dumb down researches for people to understand what rheology is. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you, Justin. Janessa? Hello, everyone. My name is Janessa Sloan. I recently graduated from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University with my degree in space physics, minor in computer science. I am a two-time SPS intern, so I worked for the SPS SOC um, with Dr. Brad Conrad, uh, summer of 2022. And then this past summer, I was a NIST research intern doing research on multidimensional spectroscopy. Thank you, Janessa. And we know that it is common for um, people to repeat and do another year and do another uh, placement site. So um, that is really good to, to also know. Uh, Lucy? Hi, I'm Lucy. Um, I'm studying earth and environmental engineering, but also engineering physics um, at Columbia. And I, um, my position was the statistics, education and diversity to statistics intern. So I was updating 18 graphs on the education and diversity website, the American Physical, for the American Physical Society. Um, it was a lot of fun. I worked with Christina O'Donnell and um, also got to use some Python. Um, yeah, I recommend. I would also say like it's really relevant today. Like I'm doing like a project that's also in like the similar field with a research mentor. So I feel like a lot of your interests, if you do like an internship, can continue on to like wherever you go. Awesome. Thank you, Lucy. Last but not least, Bryn. Hi, I'm Bryn Schirmbeck. I was an intern last year and I was also a Society of Rheology intern. Um, I worked on basically the same thing as Justin did, where it was just dumbing down a lot of these articles and making it easy for people to understand what rheology is. But I focused mostly on a property called viscoelasticity and that was my final presentation. Awesome, thank you. So we'll start, we have a, a few questions prepared for you all, but we'll also kind of go in from the Q&A um, feature as well. Um, but let's start off with the application process. So can we talk about some things as far as like, who are your recommenders? Do you recommend um, it only be professors or someone else? Um, and you know that process and make how early you should get your recommenders um, as well as what are some things that you think uh, applicants should put on their resume to highlight them or to, um, you know, have them stand out? Um, I guess one, one thing on that, um, for recommenders, I don't really have a, like, reference of who you should put on there. I did two of my professors that I worked closely with, and that worked out well for me. But one thing is that I was scolded for not getting, not asking them with enough time in advance. So that's one thing to be aware of. They said at least a three to five weeks notice before their before their reference letter is due. So just keep that in mind. I'd say that is a wonderful point because um, one of the things that we are normally waiting on on our side, Michaela and I, are those recommendations to come in, and we don't want that to be one reason why you don't get in the program. Anything else? Like, what about your resume and what to add? Um, since there are so many different placement sites, I think trying to put as much as you can on your resume, um, especially since you're uh, listing or ranking the placement sites for where you want to be and where you see yourself to least where you see yourself. Um, so if you really want to do a research internship, like at NIST, for example, definitely highlight your research. Um, that would more go on a CV. But if you can submit your CV, definitely throw everything on there and submit that. For a letter of recommendations, I want to touch on that. For me, I usually do like a professor in the department that I'm majoring in. So like, when I was studying physics, it was like my physics professor. And then I did um professor I thought like knew me well. Like I think my physics professors know me best because like I was studying physics, but then like another professor in a different department and it happened to be math, I think. So like I did that. But if like you have 
like professors that just know you well, I guess, and related to your what you're interested in. I also think um, if you've done an internship previously, you could also get your internship mentor as a recommender. Um, yeah, other than a professor. Definitely. I do want to add another good thing to ask when you're asking your recommenders if they will write you a letter, not if they will write you a letter, if they will write you a good letter of recommendation. So you want to make sure that they're not just going to say yes. Um, <clears throat> if they will say no, if they think they won't write you a good letter because they want you to get places. So make sure that you're asking if they can write a good letter of recommendation. Yeah, that's a good point because there have been letters we read and it wasn't necessarily in favor for the applicant. So um, just be careful and know that and just have confidence that they're going to write you a good letter because it does matter. Um, if, oops, go ahead. I'm sorry, if, if I can add, uh, yeah, from another side, I really prefer when a student comes to me personally and asks for a letter as opposed to the email that comes uh, at 11.59 p.m. asking for a letter tomorrow. <laughs> You know, if the student finds time and finds me and talks and gives me a little bit of an update what he or she is up to, oh, yeah, then I get very excited and then I write a good letter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there was a question about the recommender, uh, the recommendation letters, if there's like a form to follow. Um, there's not necessarily a form or a template. Um, we just ask them for a letter um, and hopefully they do put it like on their letterhead or something like that. But um, there's not a... a a format for them to follow. Um, and I think there was actually- yeah. We do have another RU question if that's- Yeah. Okay. Um, so we had somebody ask, which websites do you re recommend to search these RUs in particular? Um, they have a hard time finding RUs online and it's limiting the scope of where they're applying. Yes, so uh, I would say go to the uh, RU site from NSF. This is the site. Okay. And uh, the, uh, the other size that I gave you, while well, the SPS jobs would have the RU uh, advertised there, so but the RU has to ask for, for it to be advertised. So I had to reach out to SPS and ask, well, please, please, please advertise by RU, which I think is no brainer, but not everyone does it. But so, but NSF RU site, the, the QR link that they provided is, is really the place. And there you can go by the uh, specific discipline, and then you can sort of go through there, uh, th th uh, through that list. And I think then you have, uh, do you want to, you know, are you, are you limited geographically? Are you trying to be uh, advantageous and you would like to go somewhere far away from home? And so based on this, try to sort of go and look for places. And then also, of course, look for the topics that you want to look, uh, want to research as well. Awesome. Thank you for that. Um, if we can uh, switch, is there anything you all want to add about the application process before we move to the interview process of the SPS internship? Brent, I don't know if you're talking, but. I do want to bring up one uh, point. I'm sorry again for taking some time, but uh, this is, I, I forgot to mention, you mentioned this, but just to emphasize, are you are not taking foreigners, period. SPS internships often do. So for you, you have to have a green card. If you're not a US citizen, you have to have a green card, period. There are no exceptions. As simple as that. Okay. SPS internships do take foreigners for certain programs. Yes, we do. Um, uh, yes. A little bit more about the application process. If you don't have uh, prior experience that you can put on your resume, but you have activities like uh, one of the previous questions had mentioned, um, I would recommend taking the opportunity of, I think it's called the statement of purpose, or I don't know what the internship calls it, but um, it's basically like your statement of what you're going to, um, of what, who you are and what you've done. So definitely take that opportunity to express what you've done um, in further detail and explain why you would benefit the program. Yes. And please proofread it, have someone else read it. I think Real said earlier to have three other people look at it. Um, I'm, you know, I know many schools have writing centers or, you know, if you know someone, you know, or a teacher or professor, please have someone read it. Um, Cause again, it, it makes a big difference. Um, so moving on to the 
uh, interview process. So let's talk about your interviewing um, experience. Um, what would you say, was it how difficult it was and what are some things that they can do to prepare for the interview? Taylor. Thank you. So for the interview process, sometimes it helps to think about what are the interviewers from the interviewee. So in my experience with my SPS internship interview, they were trying to know more about me as a person. Who am I? Am I someone that can work together with the other interns? Can I work with my advisor? Can I actually accomplish the tasks of my specific placement? Will I be a trustworthy, reliable employee, basically, with high levels of integrity and self-motivation? So these are more like soft skills that are very valuable that are harder to showcase in, you know, a list of activities on a resume. But if you can demonstrate your character as a person in the interview, that can help go a long way. I think also demonstrating not only your passion for the work, but passion to learn the work um, is also really important in the interview process. Um, oh, sorry. Nope, go ahead. <laughs> um, I think another thing that's really important is um, knowing when your interview is. Um, I had kind of the unique experience where not only were my letters of recommendation also a little bit late, but my I got the time zone screwed up for the interview. And thankfully, Michaela was really nice <laughs> and walked me through it and was very just like, again, like other people have mentioned, wanted to get to know me rather than focusing on like what not not that she wasn't focusing on like what I had done but um it was a very informative personal interview and you should be prepared to share more of yourself rather than just brag about your accomplishments I'd say I agree with everything that was said um a couple things I wanted to um, highlight, uh, I think Taylor said it about, you know, we want to see, you know, you know who you are, can you get along with the other interns? So, you know, not only are you a good fit for that particular position that you're interviewing for, but are you a good fit for the SPS program in general? You know, um, the bonds that the interns gain and the lifetime, lifetime relationships that are, that come out of this, you know, that's what we're looking for. We're seeing, can you blend in, you know, or not blend in, excuse me, but can you, you know, are you going to be able to bond with everyone? Um, <clears throat> um, and Janessa, you said something about um, not just what you know, but the passion for you to learn. So going into these interviews, you know, we, we understand that you don't have, you know, a ton of experience. And if you do, wonderful. But that's not what we're looking for. We want to see, do you want to learn? You know, and things that I've stuck out before um, from some um, candidates is, you know, what can I do to prepare for this internship? You know, what would I be able to do to make sure that I'm a good fit for this or I have a successful summer? So uh, do think about that. Anyone want to add anything? Um, Michaela, do you have some questions? Um, yeah, I wanted to put this out there. Were any of you assigned a program that was not at the top of your list? And how did you like it? Maybe not the top three. Yeah, I can answer that. Um, so I was assigned to the Society of Rheology. And I think I applied for uh, the NASA one, the SOC intern stuff, and then something else so it, it was pretty obvious i was gonna get denied for the nasa one because i'm an international student um when i got interviewed by michaela and brad and kayla um they came up to me asking like oh what do you think about um rheology and when they approached me about it i was like oh okay i mean it's a new field i haven't gone into and i really want to learn more about the different fields of physics I was like, sure, why not? So I showed like, I like cooking. And then uh, they're like, okay. So when I got this in the 
society virology internship it was actually really cool because then you come in with an open mind with a project that you really weren't you that you didn't think that you would want but then you ended up wanting so it was a really nice way to find a new field that you that you can probably branch off into like for example if you want if you thought you wanted to do like quantum computing or something and then they put you in like rheology you find out that you love cooking and like you like gastronomy then you all of a sudden like oh i can probably switch to that one next so it's actually pretty fun um i think keep an open mind to wherever you end up in honestly because they will put you in like a very good internship that they think that you will thrive in thank you justin yeah, I really like that to have an open mind um, because there's so many different places. Obviously, we don't want to put you anywhere that you don't want and you have every right to decline or whatnot. Um, but you'll interview, for example, if you do interview for one, but we think you are better fit for someone, you will interview with another mentor um, and you you know, can use that chance to kind of get to know them. Please know this interview process is not just us getting to know you. You're getting to know the program. You're getting to know your mentors and if that's a good fit for you as well. And I, I stand by that not just for this internship, but for any job that you do in the future, you're interviewing them as well. Um, <clears throat> but yes, have an open mind. So when you're writing that letter, think about the different places you could possibly fit. Um, and we, when we sort through them, we kind of go through your resume, we look at your interests and we see, you know, you may fit here. You're saying you want this, but, you know, we may be a better fit for here. And we will reach out to you and ask if you're, you know, interested in interviewing with this instead. So um, thank you for that, Justin. Did anybody else have anything they wanted to add to that? Okay. Is there anything else about um, interviews anybody wanted to mention before we move on to maybe like life in DC? Okay. So let's start with an easy question. What was the favorite part of the internship for everybody? Uh, it might not be as easy as I thought. Don't worry. It is absolutely an easy question. For me, my favorite part of the internship is um, to see all different kinds of people who were very passionate about what they did. And I love that because it helps promote a community of purpose, intentional growth, and all around helps you become a better person at the end. That was what I liked the most. Thank you, Taylor, that was nice. Um, I obviously liked it so much that I did it twice. So um, I got to experience two different cohorts of people and um, it was very interesting how drastically different uh, the two groups were, but also very similar in the way of we were all very passionate about what we were doing, um, regardless if you were placed in the placement that you wanted or not. Um, I really liked the fact that in this internship, yes, you are you are very dedicated to your work. You're doing um, a lot of really cool internships and a lot of cool work, but you're also in Washington, D.C., and you get to experience a lot of things that other internship placements might not experience. Um, so there was definitely a balance of work and social life that we all um, got a chance to experience. And that's that's one thing that I think that this internship program is makes it unique compared to others. Yeah, I wanna second what everyone said so far as like the people, I think, like I had an awesome mentor who I met with frequently and I could talk about, you know, the topics that I was passionate about or like she could guide me in, in directions so I could learn more that I didn't even, things I didn't think about or know about yet. Um, and then of course there was Michaela and Kayla and Brad and Andrew, that was like always fun to see them in the office and um, the other interns, like we all lived together. So that was so like awesome to have that community and that team like with you all the time but then you're in New York I mean sorry and in, in um, DC so there's so many like 
people to see and things to do. So, you know, we met the like Nobel laureate, um, Dr. John Mather, and then randomly we saw um, Bill Nye at like this science event we were all doing like on the, yeah, in DC. Um, and so it's just like cool to see everyone's different career paths and to connect with like different parts of physics um, and see how they integrate. So yeah, people are awesome. Awesome. That, those are all amazing. So um, just so we can like, you know, on, for time uh, purposes, um, what is some what's advice that you may have for someone if they get accepted into this program? Um, what is one thing that you will let them tell them to do or, you know, once they get to Washington, D.C.? Like what is, what is advice that you would give them? I would say plan the tourist activities that you want to do in advance because a lot of things you need tickets for or like you need you need tickets for it in advance because they'll run out oh. like the some of the oh what was it the um the holocaust museum i never got to go to that one because i didn't plan in advance and that would have been really cool but just stuff like that go out with the whole cohort I think like a lot of the fun times I had in DC was when we all spontaneously wanted to go somewhere in the middle of the night or like we planned it a day before and that was like usually the most fun we've had. So yeah. Also, oh, download Eventbrite because sometimes a lot of events just pop up there. I think Lucy showed us like there was a Chinatown festival and then also we went to the the embassy of Venezuela and then they had Popusas Day. And that was really cool. That was so delicious. <laughs> yeah, it was so good. But um, yeah, download the Eventbrite. You can find like a lot of cool events there. Yeah, a lot of the embassies will do free events for people. So be sure to keep an eye out for that. You'll get free food and drinks. <laughs> um, one thing I would say before we kind of head into the probably like the last final question about like your post. Um, one thing I tell all the interns, like when we, during orientation, this internship is what you make it. Um, so what you put in, what you want to get out of it. So if you want to do the professional development, do the professional development. If you want to work on something, seek professional development. So you'd be surprised on what your organization will offer. Um, so just take advantage of that 10 weeks. It goes by very, very fast. So like Brenda was saying, like plan ahead of time. You know, um, we usually give a schedule of different type of professional development that we offer during the summer. But if there's something you don't see, you know, reach out to me. There's been plenty of times where the interns reach out like, hey, I need more information on this or, you know, I need to talk a little bit more about the GRE or I want to network or I want to, you know, I'm not in this specific program, but I want to network with so-and-so's mentor, you know, take advantage of the opportunity that you have, take advantage of your, your peers and their mentors as well. So um, again, what you put in this internship is what you get out. So utilize those, that time, again, it runs out very fast and in a blink of an eye, you're going to be at the symposium presenting your research or the work that you did over the summer. Um, anything to add to that before I ask one last question so we can close out? Awesome. I so feel like really quickly, mm -hmm. the application, sorry, something that was really helpful for me is looking at the previous interns' blogs. So like just seeing if that internship is going to like connect with you. Well, like, I don't know, someone's personal experience. No, yes, Lucy, thank you so much um, for bringing that up. The intern blogs, if you really want to get a feel of what this internship is, go to our website. Um, and just a little hint, we do ask if you read the blogs during the intern, then during the interview. So we want to hear yes. And if you say yes, we will ask a question. So we know if you read it or not. But um, do you read the blogs because it will give you a better uh, overall experience, not just at their placement side, but their life in DC. So um, please look into that. Um, so my last question for you all is, what about post-life of the intern? Um, how, ha how have you been impacted or has it impacted your life post-internship? Um, yes, um, 100%. I'm still very involved with SPS National um, because of my first, my initial internship with them. Um, after, like Kayla said, definitely whatever you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. Um, my first internship, so last summer, 
I put in a lot and I um, got a lot of opportunity um, directly after working for adopt a physicist or um, going to conferences representing SPS. I spoke at Google representing SPS. So um, I did a lot of different things. And then I kind of wanted to lay back a little bit more for my second internship and focus on the research because I would like to go to grad school. So um, I definitely did that, but I still maintain all of those relationships and um, networks that I've made previously. And I, I did make more. So um, yeah, it's, it's just a great opportunity. Definitely seize the opportunity if you can. Um, and I recommend applying. Any other thoughts? Yeah, my my life post the internship, it's it really greatly um, educated me about a lot of opportunities in physics that I just was not aware of because they're not really emphasized in my college. For instance, my college does not have a Society of Physics students chapter. So when I went back to college, I, I started one and I was president for a short while for hitting that off. And with this information for the internship, um, learn a lot more about grad school opportunities in that, other career fields in physics, ways to get into those, and how to present whatever you want, find the information in other places. I think for me, the way that has impacted me most directly is I, I have a network of people who are very knowledgeable about physics and the different fields that are related. So I know I always have people that I can go to in case I need a, an input on something that I'm working on. Awesome. Thank you all so much. I um, do think that is our time. Um, this has been very informative. And um, again, I appreciate the work that you continue to do post internship. So um, again, thank you. And this is recorded. So um, if you need to come back on this, or if you have questions, please email the about the internship specifically, please email sps-programs um, at aip.org. Michaela will put that in the chat. Um, and we will be here to help you. Um, again, read those blogs. If you need anything, let us know. This is recorded. So please also share this with um, your peers as well and encourage them to apply. We are looking for, um, we're looking for you. So apply. And that is Can all. Can I add something quickly? Yes, of course. So uh, yes, I also like to thank the interns. First of all, wonderful. I think this is the best, uh, best way we did this ever. So definitely uh, have, having you here definitely helps this uh, this event. Uh, but I also would like to say for uh, anyone who is attending the webinar, uh, while this is recording, so for example, this QR code for our site, you can find it in the recording and you can just go directly to uh, and yeah, uh, directly to the NSF site. You can also go to those other sites that I suggested. But I would like to end with uh, this, that uh, I've been to, I'm a PI of our U program. We, running it for the second uh, period now. I've been to many reuse. I've been to many research symposiums from our reuse. I feel very strongly about reuse. That's that's something that is uh, my baby. But I also have to say that SPS internship, this is way cooler. So yeah. my suggestion to you would be apply now to SPS internship. And then you still will have a month to sort of, okay, start applying to those different reuse. Because as the internship deadline is coming up very quickly, as was mentioned before, you need to get those letters coming in soon. You need to talk to professors as soon as possible. So think about this right now. How do I know that SPS internship is the coolest? Well, I've been to a couple of those events together with interns and being in this company of students who went through those different experiences related to physics, completely different experience, completely blew my mind. Never ever happened to me before because you go to okay, all students do soft matter, all students do astronomy, all students do I don't know condensed matter. Okay, it's all interesting, but here you get students in policy, students working on outreach talks, students working on a NIST research project, students working at NASA together in one community. Totally different experience, completely different levels. So apply to SPS internship. I'm done. What he said. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Uh, again, thank you, Kirill. Thank you, uh, round of applause for our SPS president for being here. I know you are super busy, so thank you so much for being here um, and showing your passion 
um, and as well as the SPS um, previous intern. Once you're an intern, you are you are forever part of the family. So thank you and have a good rest of your, your day. I think I have to go.